And so the action is over in the Men's Southwest Conference Swimming and Diving Championships, where we still have some honors to give out over in the interview area. Way of practicing to get ready for the 10-meter. Oh, for the amateur scorekeepers at home, what should they look for to for scoring? Well, of course, the most important thing that you're going to look for is the entry. You know, whether a diver is either past vertical or short of vertical. So if you see me saying long, that means he went past vertical, or, or if he goes short of vertical, I'll be saying short. Okay. A very nice dive by Kurt. That was a forward three and a half somersaults in tuck position. And very, very good scores. You see eights and eight and a halfs from him. Ten being perfect, is that right? That's right. And that's a very high DD dive. And DD is the degree of difficulty. So a 2.7 degree of difficulty is a very difficult dive, and he did it very well. Very nice. All right. Doug Knight, a senior from SMU, will be next. Yes, Doug is an old teammate of mine, and he's really come along here at SMU. He should be really pleased with his diving career there, and I know his coach, Jim Stilson, is. Doug is doing a back one-and-a-half somersault with one-and-a-half twist, and as you see, his legs went past vertical, so this, the judges are going to be taking off for that. Let's take a look at that again, and you can talk about how he, he seemed to lose a little bit of control here as he came out. Well, he had a real strong jump off the tower. He just ducked his head over at the end, and his legs go flying over. When you duck your head over, that's when your legs go past vertical, and you see that splash. Okay. Next up, Bob Malmer from Arkansas, a freshman. Bob will be doing an inward one and a half somersault in the tuck position. This is a very, very easy dive, and he's doing it from the lower platform, so that takes down the degree of difficulty even more. Now, would he do this just to get some confidence building for himself? Or? Well, I think it's due to a lack of experience, to tell you the truth. Okay. But those aren't bad scores. He gets a good jump off. But you see his, his feet are flat, but he gets in the water pretty nicely, and there isn't very much splash. That's another thing that the judges are definitely looking for is the amount of splash. You've heard of the rip entry. Right. It sounds like a uh, piece <laughs> of cloth being ripped. Which well, you, you do not want. Well, no, you do want oh, the rip entry. Oh, you do. A rip entry means that they go in the water with literally no splash okay. at all, and it sounds like a rip in a piece of cloth. So you're looking for that rip entry every time. That was Brian Walker from Arkansas, a junior. That was a relatively difficult dive. He did a back one and a half somersault with two and a half twists. Let's take a look at Brian Walker again. You see again. he jumps up off the tower and starts his twisting action right away, looks for the water, and really hits a pretty good entry. But that amount of splash is just a little bit too much for these judges. Okay. Joe Ogden, another Arkansas diver. Now, this is a difficult dive. He's doing it back two and a half in the tuck position, but he's doing it from a low platform, so that raises the, the degree of difficulty. Not a bad dive. No. Let's see how the judges saw that dive. Well, either the scoreboard, I was going to say the scoreboard went on the blink or they were taking their time. Well, sometimes with these electronic scoreboards, as with anything in electronics, they have trouble with it. He has a good jump off the tower. He leans a little bit too far back and just a little bit short of vertical, so you see all that splash. But that's a, that's a lot of dive for that five-meter platform, so that was pretty good. I think he's going to be pleased with that. Eric Murph, a junior from SMU. Now, Eric is a very, very strong diver. He came in second place on both the one and three-meter, and he's a very good tower diver, too. And I don't, to tell you the truth, I don't think Eric's going to be real pleased with that because his uh, entry wasn't as good as I know he can do. Six, six, five, six, five and a half, six. So the judges were moderately now pleased this, with it. This is an inward two and a half. He backs off a little bit too far, does an inward two and a half somersault, and just lets his legs go long on the uh, entry, and he gets that splash. Also what uh, included was... Uh, responsible for that splash is he let his stomach go a little bit too loose and that's where he got a little bit of arch in his back. Paul Stabrowski from Arkansas. Now this is a very unusual dive. He will land feet first in the water. Now judges usually like to see from the platform, they usually like to see a head first dive, not a feet first dive. Hmm. We'll see what they thought of this one. It really wasn't that bad of a dive but Sometimes they just, they're picky. Thank you. Six, 
But when you talk about degree of difficulty, now how will that affect the point ranking? Well, the judges' scores are added up. They take the high and the low and they throw those out and they add up the rest of the scores. Okay. And then they multiply that total by the degree of difficulty. So a higher de degree of difficulty and the higher the score, the higher total score. Jeff Taylor of TCU looking for a high score right here. Jeff was going to be doing an inward two and one half somersaults in the tuck position. Now, this isn't that hard of a dive if he were doing it off 10 meter, but because he's doing it off the uh, seven and a half platform, it means he has less time to get those somersaults in. So the degree of difficulty on this dive is a 2.7. He'll be spinning inward towards the tower two and a half times. I'd take my time before I tried this too. <laughs> I've been known to take my time as well. Well, it looked good to this amateur eye. Let's see how the judges. Well, unfortunately, he left that dive a little bit too short. He spun that, he spun it a little bit too slow. He brought his legs up to him instead of going and chasing his legs. And he, as you see, he left it just a little bit short because he didn't have time to come out of that tuck position All to right. get that nice long entry. Christian Styron, a sophomore from Texas, next up. Now, Christian's had a wonderful meet so far. He's placed in the, he's placed third on both events so far, so he's doing real well. He's going to be doing a four two and a half somersaults with one twist. And I think he's going to be pleased with that. Unfortunately, he finished that a little bit too low towards the water. But those are good scores. Those are good scores. Let's watch that again. As you see, he's running forward. He starts his somersault and is twisting action right away. Goes back into his somersault, looks for the water, and just finishes it just a little bit too low. But nice dive overall. Now the point leader right now, Scott Doney, a freshman from SMU. Scott Doney has a lot of promise. He's done so much in, uh, in so little time. And he's done very, very well nationally, too. And this, I must say, is one of his best events. And this is a very difficult dive. Oof. I don't think he's going to be pleased with that. That's a back right. three and a half somersault. High degree of difficulty, but again, you called it right on the money in terms of the scores. Four and one half. Well, he's really got a good top off the tower, real good spinning action. Right here, you see, he just kicks out too late, and he cannot stop that rotation, and the legs go over every time. You can really see it when we get to the replay, then. Uh, that's really a good shot right there. We start again, second round now, second dive. Kurt Bubness. Now, Kurt's going to be doing the exact same dive that Scott is now. Kurt has a chance with this dive to pull up very, very close to Scott. If he hits this dive with the high degree of difficulty that this dive has built into it, he could very well catch him, maybe even pass him. Looked like a pretty good dive. Well, it was a little bit short of vertical, so it's not going to get okay. it's not going to get good enough scores to really, really catch up with Doni. Okay, as you watch here, he has good, good spinning action, and he kicks just too soon, and you see, he's short of vertical. He doesn't get those yep. legs completely straight up and down, that vertical line that we like to see. We call this 10 meter, and yet they have various uh, lengths of boards here that are high. To, uh, what, how come it can be different uh, than 10 meters? Well, in, in this competition, they allow the divers, since most of these divers don't get a chance to compete or, or practice all year long on a 10-meter platform, they give these divers a chance to compete on some of the lower platforms okay. to avoid injuries. Now, that was Doug Knight. He did an inward two-and-a-half somersault on the 7-meter and did it very well. That'd be easy to figure out average-wise for me, and they're all 7s. <laughs> He comes out and he has a very good entry. Look at this entry. No splash. Very, very little splash. And that was great. Now, Jane Rita, the finals, are these three dives? They get three chances or how many dives will they have? That's right. Three dives. All right. Next up, Bob Maumer from Arkansas. Okay. Now, this is a very low de degree of difficulty factor. It's forward one and a half with one twist. And unfortunately, not very, very well done, to tell you the truth. Well, you talked about him taking a low degree of difficulty on his first uh, dive as well. 
Well, like I said before, I think a lot of these divers get to practice on one meter and three meter springboards, but not all of the, the teams in the conference are lucky enough to have a facility yeah. like this. Yeah. So they're, they're stuck working out at all, if at all, on platforms, maybe on the lower platforms. Another razor back up now, Brian Walker. Now, Brian came up last time with a, with a pretty good dive. Now, this is going to be a very, very strange looking dive. It's called a reverse flying somersault. You'll see what I mean once he takes off the tower. He's going to fly, then tuck up. Whoa. That's what we call a fly. Unfortunately, he was just short of vertical on that, so the judges really had to take off for that. Let's take a look at it you again. See, he jumps up, flies through the air, lets it hold it, tucks up, reaches for the water, tightens up, and just left it a little bit short of vertical. Yet another Arkansas diver, Joe Ogden, with his second dive. Now, this is going to be an interesting dive for, uh, for Joe. This is a four, three and a half somersaults in tuck. Mm. And I don't think he's yeah. going to be pleased with that. We should mention off the 10 meter, we're not talking about not only losing points if you make a mistake, you could hurt yourself. Oh, most definitely. You see, he has a good running here, but he's way too far out over the tower, and he gets too much momentum going, and he doesn't come out soon enough, and he lets his legs go past, and the judges are going to take off for that every time. Here is Eric Murph, a junior from SMU. Now, Eric needs to hit this dive. He's going to be doing a four, three and a half somersault. It's the same dive as before, except in the pike position, which is more difficult. Now, the and pike, is that that, that tucked? Well, is the tuck position is when you have your legs bent. The pike position is when you have your legs straight.